Okay, today we're going to demonstrate how to set up an Akron Beachmaster foldable inflatable dinghy. On the left of the picture you can see the components as they would appear as you unload them from the carton. You've got the, the big item is the carry bag itself, there's the rails that go down each side of the floorboards, the paddles, the orange re repair kit, the foot pump with the blue lead on it, and the seats and, and uh, floorboards themselves. Okay, so our able assistant Bruce is going to show you how to do it. So simply unroll the boat and the first stage is to inflate it partially using the foot pump. We're also going to demonstrate how quick it is with a um, vacuum cleaner in blow mode if you can find one. They're not that common these days but they are available and they, uh, they work really really quickly. You can also buy 12 volt blowers from most chandlery shops. They also work very well and have the advantage that you can use them at the beach where you wouldn't normally have 230 volts unless you have to have a motorhome. So you can see with the foot pump, it takes a few minutes per chamber. There are three main chambers, plus a keel chamber which forms the V bottom of the boat when it's fully inflated. At this first stage, we only inflate the boat partially. We don't try, attempt to get it fully inflated because it's really just to get it into shape, ready to fit the floorboards in. All chambers have a valve which has two positions. One is a free flow position and one, the other one is a one way mode. And the one-way mode, of course, is what we want when we're putting air into it. The free-flow mode allows you to empty the chambers when you're packing it up after you've finished using it. Okay, now I think we'll get Bruce to demonstrate the, the 230-volt one. Uh, can we, Bruce? Just to give you a contrast, it's certainly very quick and very painless. Not that the exercise does anyone any harm, I guess. So you can see that's a lot quicker. You watch this one here. Okay. When you're using a blower like this, you need to be in the free flow mode. Once it's fully inflated, as inflated as it can be, you move quickly to, to reverse it by turning the little essential nipple in the valve into the one-way mode, otherwise you lose the air. That's what Bruce is doing just now. Okay, so there it is. It's, it's overinflated for fitting the floorboards, but it's, it does illustrate how quick and easy it is to do that. First board to go in is the bow one, and you note that they do have an up and down side, and all the boards are numbered, starting from the uh, bow, and the number side is the side that goes up. All the boards have a non-skid surface. It's important to get them in line and make sure that that central keel tube is also in line with the access hole which you can just see behind the yellow nose portion. Now Bruce is putting the, the next uh, board in, it's always the, the, the aft one, the rear one, and it tucks under those bands that go across the transom and the stern. Now he's letting a bit of the air out because it's going to be hard to get the last one in without he uh, does that. into the one either side of it using a tongue and groove effect and when they're fully in line you've got to be quite careful at this stage you push them down just like that 
that stretches the boat into shape and, and size and now the uh, side rails go on. Just make sure there's no fabric tucked underneath the boards at this point in time. It's a good idea if you can find a small piece of uh, 2 inch by 1 inch or uh, 50 by 25 timber stick under the boards at this point to lift them off the ground. It makes it easy to get those rails in, which can be a little bit tricky otherwise. You'll notice that the rails have a curved surface on one side and a slot on the other. The slot obviously fits into the, the boards. The curved surface must match the curvature of the pontoon, so just make sure you get them the right way around. If you don't, you'll have some funny lumps underneath the boat when you inflate it. And notice that the rails fit equally over the, the rear panel and the middle panel. If you have a bigger boat, you will have four panels, in which case the rails will be longer and they'll fit over the over all of the last three panels. The bow panel, the bow floor panel, always is free floating to allow a little bit of movement as you go over waves. Now we're cheating a bit because we've got the 230 volt vacuum turner on blow function, which works really well as you can see. appears to be having some trouble getting that valve into the one-way mode after he's inflating it. If you're at a beach and you have to rely on the foot pump, which is fine, it'll just take you a bit longer. And you probably won't have to go to the gym that night. Notice that the, the uh, vacuum uh, cleaner type pump does not fully inflate the boat. It's still partially soft at this stage, which is a good time to fit the seat in because when it's fully inflated, it's almost impossible to do. It's also fairly difficult to remove the seat once it's fully inflated, and that's a good idea, of course. So Bruce is now going to finish off the boat by doing the final inflation with the foot pump. As you can see, it only takes a few a few kicks at this stage to get it hard. And you can tell when it's hard because the foot pump actually doesn't really allow you to over-inflate the, the boat. Nor does the um, vacuum cleaner blower either, for that matter. You should never use a high-pressure pump such as a tyre inflator because they are able to develop very high pressures and they will blow a, a, a dinghy apart quite easily given time. They tend to be high pressure, low volume. What we want for this job is high volume at low pressure. Now you'll notice that all the wrinkles have disappeared out of the dinghy and she's looking really nice, just about ready to use. We have a final chamber, that's the keel chamber to fill. That will form the V bottom and the bottom of the hull. This is what Bruce is fitting now. Can't quite see the valve, but as you as he pumps, you'll see the dinghy rise. There she goes. I'll get Bruce to roll it over in a moment so you can actually see the shape of the V bottom on it.
now, now you can see the V bottom keel, which makes the boat uh, perform very nicely in water. Okay, Bruce, thank you. Final step is to assemble the oars and put the oars in place. As you see, they just clip together. And please note that our oars are heavy duty. The wall thickness on our paddles is 50% greater than just about any other competitor in the market. We do this so when you really need them, they don't break on you. As you can see, they snap conveniently out of the way when not needed. But the, uh, the oarlock pin that is uh, being fitted right now does provide a very smooth rowing action, very uh, free of friction, and as you can see, when they're not used, they snap out of the way completely, so they don't get in the, in the way when you're fishing or sitting on the boat or doing any other activity. So there we are, the boat is finished, ready to go, all you need is some seawater. Thank <laughs> you.